Hello, my name is Nick Walter. This is a presentation I gave at the BYU Cocoa Heads meeting on September 12th, 2013. And uh, this is a presentation about UI local notifications. Uh, we're going to walk through what they are, how to use them, and uh, hopefully answer a lot of questions you have or get you started off in the right direction. Uh, to start, let me tell you why I chose this topic and presented on it. Uh, I created an app recently that uh, really solves a problem that I have. I'm a night owl and I always think of things that I want to text my friends and family in the middle of the night, 1, 2 a.m. And uh, if some of your friends are like me, if you text them past a certain time and their phone goes off, it's not their problem that it went off, it was you that texted them, which I don't completely agree with, but I don't want to make any enemies. So I made this app that you can create a whole message of saying who you want to send it to and when, and when the time comes, you will get a notification that uh, it's time to send this message to somebody, and with one tap, you can have your message sent. Um, so this will kind of be uh, an example I've moved back to a lot during the presentation and the purpose why I decided to do this topic. Uh, just to review, a notification is something that comes on through your phone. Uh, this is an example in the lock screen uh, from my app text later. Uh, you can see it kind of has the app icon, the app name, a little message about uh, what it's doing. And uh, they also can play sounds. Try and guess what this sound is. Okay, so for those of you playing at home, that was the uh, intro song off 50 Cent's Get Rich or Die Trying album. It's a 50 cent piece rolling on the table and I think a Glock being cocked, but that's irrelevant. Notifications show you information they play sounds. Um, let's get into the technical details about what a notification is. So it's a part of UIKit and it's available in iOS 4.0 and later and inherits from NSObject. Um, what a local notification is not is a push notification. Uh, the two can be handled very similarly, but for today's topic, we are not talking about push notifications. And an instance of a push notification is when uh, some event happens, and usually from a web server, uh, some sort of information is passed through Apple's push notification service and is delivered to the device. Uh, a great example is Instagram. One of your friends likes your photos, you'd get a push notification that says, Slam and Ammon liked your photo on Instagram, something like that. Um, but that's not what we're talking about today. This is just local notifications that are timed on your phone um, that are completely local to your iOS device. It's not like if you have an app installed uh, across an iPhone and an iPad that a local notification is going to appear on both. It is completely local to the iOS device. So let's just blow that away. Um, why use UI local notification? Well, uh, and a lot of apps you're going to want to remind the user to take some sort of action. This is the whole crux of my app that uh, reminds people to send a text message later. Uh, I think Google Maps does a really interesting use of uh, UI local notifications in that when it's giving directions to a user, it will use a local notification to say, turn left on 600 South. And uh, I just am very intrigued in how they... Uh, use it and I think it's very efficient. Uh, but I feel like the number one reason you would use UI local notifications is it brings users back into your app. Uh, it's amazing that you can schedule an event that sometime in the future uh, if the user's away from their phone it will show up on their lock screen when they return to it. If they're in another app it will show up at the top and with one tap or with one swipe the user is back into your world and I think this is huge power that you can harness from UI local notifications uh, but this is uh, definitely a privilege if you abuse this users will completely reject uh, your access to delivering notifications uh, if you've noticed a lot of app or every app if you want to use um, these notifications that ask the users if they're okay and uh, the user can turn those off at any point so uh, be aware of that. Uh, how to use UI local notification. In my thoughts, it's a four-step process, and this is kind of how I'm going to uh, explain all of it. Uh, first, you can create these UI local notifications. 
Then you can schedule them uh, to be shown later. Then once they are shown and interacted with, you have to handle them. And then finally, uh, if for some reason before they fire, you might want to cancel them. So this is how I'll explain these four topics, just kind of step by step. So let's start with create. Uh, UI local notifications have a total of 11, 11 properties. Uh, I consider these three properties to be the essential properties that almost any UI local notification is going to need to be effective. Uh, this is by no way a rule or anything of the sort, but I think this is a, a good guideline to follow. Um, first, the alert body. Uh, if you look back on this slide, uh, the alert body, body is in my notification that says, you have a scheduled text you need to send. Instagram would say, Slam and Ammon liked your photo or something like that, uh, text that you can show to the user. Application icon badge number, that's the little red circle with a number in it that appears on your app icon in the home screen uh, that shows the users that there's something waiting for them and uh, should also convey that there's some sort of action that they should be taking to clear that number. Um, the last one is the user info property, which this is a NS dictionary and objects put in them must be uh, property list types like NS number, NS string, but th where this becomes very valuable is you can store information here about uh, the particular notification. So in case, so for instance, in my app, um, I have a message that's tied to a notification. Let's say I have a message I want to send to Mike tomorrow at 3 p.m. that says, do you want to grab dinner tonight? And when that notification is fired and the user swipes on it to go and send the message, I'm going to store in the user info uh, the object ID of the message that I have stored uh, so that I can pull it up, get the message ready so that the user has to sit one, only hit one button and the message will be sent out to Mike. Uh, so there's really no rules on this user info dictionary, um, but it's just kind of a place that you can store information that you need when a uh, notification uh, is handled. Um, let's go to what I call the bonus properties. Uh, these are fun things that, that I would consider not essential. Some apps, they might be absolutely essential. Um, but alert action, uh, if you look down on the text, this one's pretty subtle. Uh, you can see that it says slide to send this message. Um, the custom text that I put in in the alert action was send this message. Uh, if you don't specify alert action, it will default to slide to unlock. Um, but you can totally customize that. Uh, the alert launch image, this is the image that you can show the user if they uh, tap or swipe on a notification and it opens up your app, you can decide to show a custom uh, image with that. And lastly, the sound name. Um, this is something that you can uh, play a custom noise. Remember earlier we had the uh, 50 cent uh, sound clip that was playing. Uh, if you don't specify a sound name, it's going to default to nil, which means there will be no sound when your notification comes through. So uh, I would recommend at the very least you want to use uh, just the standard unlock noise, which there is a uh, constant that you can place in there. Look at the UI local notification documentation to find that. Um, and the other rule with these is they can't be longer than 30 seconds. If they uh, exceed 30 seconds, the phone will just play the standard uh, notification sound. So we just figured out how to create a UI local notification. Now let's talk about how to schedule a notification. So the two properties that are relevant here are fire date and repeat interval. And the essential one is fire date. This is an NS state that you want to specify exactly when this uh, notification should be brought and alerted to the user. Um, repeat interval is a way that you can specify uh, that this notification ha should happen again and again. So uh, you could have it repeat every weekday, once a month, once a week. Uh, there's lots of different options, but uh, you can control that with repeat interval. So we've created our notification. We assigned a fire date to it. Now we need to uh, put it in the queue, per se, and um, make sure the system will fire it off. And two methods that you can use, they're both through UI application. One is schedule local notification, which you just pass in the notification that you created, and it will uh, alert the user on the specified fire date. The other one is present local notification now, which regardless of fire date will immediately present the notification. Something to keep in mind is that the system can only keep the 64 soonest firing notifications. Uh, what that means is uh, for your app, 
you can have up to 64 UI local notification uh, scheduled to be sent, but if you exceed that number, the system will only take uh, the 64 that are the soonest to be fired. Um, and repeat notifications, the ones that we talked about that you know go once a week, once a month, whatever, those only count as one in this count of 64. So we've scheduled it, and now let's say a notification has appeared, and uh, the user uh, taps on it or whatever. There, there's really two use cases we have here. One is uh, if your app is open and the user's using it, um, what's a method is going to be called called did receive local notification, and that's in the uh, app delegate of your app. Um, but there's not going to be any alert. There's not going to be a sound or the badge, that little number on the app icon, is not going to be updated. Uh, that's uh, all those things. If you wanted those to happen, you'd have to do them customly. Uh, but this assumes that if the user's in your app and a notification happened, that you're probably going to have some sort of custom way to handle that. Um, the other situation is, uh, let's say you're on your home screen, for example, in this instance, and just at the top there, you can see a notification has come down and the user taps on it. That's going to call the did finish launching with options method and inside the options parameters where you can get the UI local notification and uh, you need to put your logic in there and how to appropriately handle that. So for instance in my app when someone interacts and taps on a notification I'm going to present the uh, compose message view controller so that they only have to push the send button and the text message that they scheduled to send uh, will send out. Uh, one more thing to keep in mind is that the badge icon has to be completely managed by your app. Now, something that I ran into was uh, I would schedule a notification, and when it came through, I'd tap on it and send the message, whatever. Uh, but when I came out of my app back to the home screen, I would see that the badge count was still at one, and I thought, that's weird. I've tapped on the notification. That should go back to zero. Uh, but that's not how the badge uh, number is handled. It's a property of UI application and you are completely responsible for setting it. So for example, in my app, whenever a user taps on or handles a notification, I'm going to do a count and reset that num number to what it should be. So if they had one to send and then they send it, I'm going to set it back to zero so nothing shows. Or for instance, if they had five messages that needed to be sent and they sent three of them, I'm going to reduce that number back down to two. Uh, but your application is completely responsible for that. So we've uh, created, scheduled, and handled a notification. Now this is probably a little bit more of a rare use case, but uh, I feel like a lot of apps will need to implement it, which is uh, canceling. Um, and there's two ways that you can do this. You can cancel all local notifications, or you can cancel a specific notification. And uh, for the instance in my app, sometimes a lot of things that you uh, think about at midnight or 1 a.m. might not make sense in the morning and so you'll want to delete those. So anyways if that's the case um, you're going to want to get that specific uh, message and the notification tied to it and cancel it. Uh, the way that you can do this is UI application has a property called scheduled local notifications which is an array of all the notifications that are tied to your app. That's remember the one that could be up to 64 notifications. And um, so for example in what my app does if someone decides they don't want to send a message anymore, uh, they'll hit the delete button, I'll grab the scheduled local notifications, and I'll loop through that array, and I will see if any of those notifications in their user info dictionary uh, has the same object ID as the message that I'm trying to delete. And if one of those matches up, I will uh, use that cancel local notifications method, get rid of that notification, and then I will delete the message. So those are the four steps. Um, I hope this was helpful for you in learning more about UI local notifications. Again, I think this is a huge opportunity uh, to get users back and into your app. Uh, your app is doing something useful for them, and sometimes you've got to remind your users about uh, when to use it. Or, I mean, maybe it's the crux of your app. That's my text messaging app. That's kind of the magic that it has. So uh, unfortunately, this isn't a live audience, so we can't do questions, but... Uh, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter. My handle is Nick Chuck Walter. And uh, also, I'm a member of the BYU Cocoa Head. So if you're here in uh, Utah County or anywhere close, feel free to come out to our meetings uh, or see us. Our website is cocoheads.byu.edu. Or you can find, our, find us on Twitter at uh, BYU Cocoa Heads. Thanks a lot for listening.